Welcome to another show, I'm Sid and today I'm going to be going over this simple distortion effect with some retouching in Spark AR Studio, which is the program you use to create Instagram and Facebook filters. Uh, before we get started though, usually I would create a new project and just show you how it's done. Before we get started, I recommend that you go down into the description of this video, click a couple of the links. One of them in particular will take you over to this website, the Spark AR documentation site, and this link, this page, distorting the face and adding retouching. Now this has a sample project and a text guide on how to create the effect that we're going to be showing off today but it also has this link uh, which is a sample content folder uh, so you download this and it will download here and you'll end up with a zip file once you un unzip it then you'll end up with this face distortion and retouching pack now that is what we're going to be using today so uh, if you don't have that click the link in the description and it's there for free available on the facebook spark ar website sorry for this uh, frame drop so i'm going to pause this now and I'm going to open up a new project and I'll show you exactly how I made this effect. Doo -doo. Okay, so let's grab this and I'll switch back over to here. We'll get my FaceTime camera here. How's it going? Uh, and next we're going to take our face distortion and retouching folder, which we've unzipped. Open that up. Uh, and you'll see here there is a finished project and an unfinished project. So they have assets in and textures and things, there they are. You can actually open that project up and see the complete thing for yourself. Edit it from there if you want. Uh, just use that as a template. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna enter objects here and then face distortion pack. And we're gonna drag that out here just so that it's easier to access. I'll close that folder. So we have our face distortion pack here. Open that up and you'll have this face distortion pack.fbx file. Now FBX is the Spark AR Studio uh, file format. It's what the filters end up being uploaded to the Spark AR Hub in. So we're gonna take this folder now and I'm gonna drag it over to our assets panel in our new project. It'll take a second because my computer is quite slow. Okay, so now that's loaded in, uh, we have our face distortion pack here, which is a like a, an assets collection. And then down here we have our 3D model, uh, which is the face distortion pack. It takes one of the textures that again is linked in the description of the face mesh. Ow, my foot's falling asleep, hold on takes one of the textures uh, of the face mesh and uh, just adds all of these different 3D components in so you can make adjustments for yourself. We also have this Lambert here which is a texture material and right now that's just there. We don't even need to worry about that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up add object and we're going to add a face mesh to our scene. Now that will appear nested inside of this face tracker so you can add the face tracker first and then nest a face mesh inside of it but obviously that's a little bit quicker so a little tip for you there. Now, what we're gonna do is usually we'd add a material at this point, and you'll see if I add a material, then we'll create a new one, you'll get this usual mesh, the one that you're used to seeing when you make your first few effects in Spark. But we're actually gonna undo that. We don't want a material on this face mesh. Instead, we're gonna add a deformation, which is just underneath the materials. Hit that plus button, and you'll see our face distortion pack is here. You can import a new one if you want, if you wanna make something in Blender, or Maya, or 3ds Max, or something like that. Uh, then you can totally do that and import it and it will work in a similar way. But we're going to be going with this face distortion pack for now uh, because this was provided by Spark AR. It has a lot of textures in it. As you can already see, it started working. Let me pull that down for a second, get myself back to normal. Uh, and I'll give you an explanation of what's going on. So first things first, we have the deformation morph object here. And as you can see underneath, we have all of these different uh, sliding options like slider options here for the eyes, the scale of the eye and the Z position here the left eye and the right eye, uh, the nose scale, and then the Z position of that. So let's, for example, we'll make our nose bigger and you'll just see it happen in real time on my face. So it's tracking onto my face and I can just scale up my nose and I can also adjust the Z axis. So if I turn slightly to the left, you'll see it warps a little bit, but I can now extend it out further along the Z axis uh, and I end up with just this giant nose, which is kind of fun, I guess. That's one thing that we can do. Uh, now, when you make your own objects, say in Blender or something like that, you will not have all of these by default. I am not 100% sure how Facebook has made this. I'm looking into it myself, and when I do understand it, I will make my own and I'll do a tutorial on that as well. But in the meantime, basically, you can adjust these any way you want, and it increases the scale. As you can see though, when I do it with the eye on the scale and the Z axis, you'll see it's kind of pushing out beyond my actual eye. That is because up here in the properties tab, we are currently tracking the eyes and the mouth with the uh, in the face mesh itself. So what we're gonna do is uncheck the mouth and uncheck the eyes. And now it expands it, extends it out on the Z and scales it up, but it isn't as warped and it's still focused on the actual eye itself. So now I can do that for the other one. 
Uh, I have big bags under my eyes, so that won't appear in the final effect. That's just that's just a personal choice. <laughs> I don't sleep much. As you can see, we can adjust this. We can adjust pretty much anything. You can create any kind of effect that you like. Uh, scale it up. I've got a big nose. I've got big eyes. It's pretty cool. Uh, it has a lot of different sets here. You can change the shape of the head. Square, triangle, teardrop. You can stretch it and squash it so you can make it wider or thinner uh, at different points. It's pretty interesting. You've probably seen a lot of these filters already, but uh, my favorite one's forehead. You can just make the forehead really tall. <laughs> so yeah, you end up with this really very strange kind of alien look. Uh, Facebook themselves has in the past banned facial uh, changing, like uh, filters that change facial features too severely, but now they've implemented this. So I'm assuming that it's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can also add some interactivity. So as you can see, they all here have these little orange uh, arrows. So if we open up our patch editor here, show the hide the patch editor, then I'll give you just a quick example of something you can do. Let's pull these all back down to zero, get ourselves nice and normal looking. Uh, doo -doo. I do like having these options down here though. It's pretty handy. Uh, yeah, here I am. Oh, I say normal looking, but whatever, we move. Um, so yeah, if we want to take, for example, the forehead scale, we can hit that and we can make a patch in here and get rid of that. And now if we take our face tracker, which our mesh is nested inside of, and we drag that into our patch editor, then we end up with a face finder patches, face finder, face select, and face tracker, which are all connected up already. Uh, and now if we take the forehead and move it over here, and in the middle of that, we want an interaction. So let's say we'll have mouth open. This is quite a relic, this is quite an easy one to do. Uh, we're gonna do it with mouth openness. So connect from face to face, and then from mouth openness to forehead. So now, as I open my mouth, you'll be able to see that my forehead gets larger. Which is kind of fun, right? It's kind of a cool effect. And uh, if you come down into your face mesh, you can see that you can do this for just about anything. So if I drag the nose in as well, then you'll see when I open my mouth now, the forehead and the nose will expand. Now obviously you can do other interactions, it doesn't have to be mouth openness, but it is a little bit more complicated to do, for example, mouth open and then have it reverse, so it gets bigger when your mouth opens and then gets small again when the mouth closes. That's similar to my big head filter, I don't know if anyone's seen that, it's uh, available on Instagram if you want to go follow me. But yeah, you can add all of these in as patches, you can add interactions, and as long as they're connected to the face tracker and it's tracking the features of your face, you can pretty much do anything you want. You can take all of these and add them all in and connect them up to this mouth open, or you can add different ones in, connect them up to different features. So for example, when the mouth opens, maybe you get a big forehead and a big nose, but if you blink, then maybe your head becomes triangular or square or your chin gets larger. So obviously you can play around with these effects uh, you can like try out different things and obviously if you're better at 3D development if you know how to import the meshes and textures and things into Blender and make your own version of this well first of all I'd say leave a comment in the description uh, leave a comment below letting me know how you did it because I'd love to know uh, and <laughs> yeah uh, I'm, it's something that I'm looking into and when I do know exactly how to make this type of thing with these patches and everything then I will definitely like make a tutorial showing you how to do it but yeah this is a very simple thing uh, we got that. I'm actually gonna just quickly undo this, undo this, because I prefer just having everything set at 50. So I'm gonna cut forwards now, and you'll see once everything's at 50. Okay, so here we are, everything's set at 50. You'll see these two patches are still there. So even though they're not connected to anything, they're currently not affected by this percentage. They're affected by what's in here. So you see the weight here is at zero. That means that regardless of the fact that this is at 50, my nose itself hasn't actually scaled or changed at all, and it's the same with my forehead. So if I delete these two from here, uh, still did nothing, <laughs> but that's fine. I guess I guess it was working all along. Uh, hey, Sid from the future here. One quick thing I forgot to mention. Uh, if you want to smooth out the skin, as you may see, there's a little bit of warping and stuff, but uh, if you want to smooth out the skin, then you can do that by adding in some retouching. So what I've got here is a second face mesh. So in Face Tracker, hit Add and add a second face mesh. Make sure that it's nested underneath your first one for distorting the face. So all of this is the distortion one. Then I have a retouching one here. So what I did with that is I created a new material, which I called retouching. Uh, so I'll do it again. I'll just show you what it looks like. Retouching here, uh, retouch. And then we take the shader type and we change it to from standard to retouching. And what that would do is just make it invisible. And now you can, as you can see, I have 
little spots on my forehead, things like that, like general skin that humans have. Uh, and if you increase this, then you'll see it starts to blend those features together, make the colors more uniform and smooth out the skin. You can also do it full screen or just on the face. So if I uncheck this box, it's only smoothing out the skin on my face. Whereas if I check this box, then you may be able to see, let me show you just down here. You may be able to see it, but it is now affecting the full screen. So the whole screen is experiencing that skin smoothing blur. So I'll uncheck that so it's just the face. And yeah, if you're experiencing any sort of edge tear or anything like that, then you can come in and retouch the face. This is a quick add on uh, back to the video. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the effect that we started with. You can obviously play around with all the features. You can add meshes, background layers, anything that you've learned from the other tutorials on my channel or anywhere else. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. It's my first one in over a month. I thought it would be a nice simple tutorial just to help me get back into the swing of things. So as I say, leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe because we're almost at 750 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane. Uh, thank you to everyone who's continued to subscribe, who keeps watching all my videos and stuff. It means a lot. Uh, we're on the path to a thousand. It's going to be great. I can't wait. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. Sorry for the frame rate. <laughs>